Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Wow, September 1. You know, I was thinking about today and what does September 1 represent? Well, so for so many, uh, it, it is just a date. For so many, it could be uh, a birth date, an anniversary. I know it's my cousin's anniversary and I called and I wish them a happy anniversary. But, you know, I think nine is such a spiritual number. Nine is a number for birthing. Nine is uh, a, a number of beginning. You know, it takes nine months for a baby to be born. And in the ancient, ancient, ancient times, it used to take nine years, nine months, nine weeks, nine days, nine hours. And on the ninth minute, on that moment, they used to, when they were building churches, that's how long it would take. And on that moment is when they would open the doors and say, welcome. So it took that, the entire thing. So I think nine is such a grand number. And you know, in mathematically, no matter what you divide or multiply to nine or even add to nine, it comes back to nine. So nine is such a strong number. Hello, Mark. Oh, September uh, is your birth month. Congratulations. Please let me know which date it is. I've got a surprise. So today I want to talk about um, thank you, gratefulness. Every morning when I wake up, it's one of the things that I have created as a ritual. And the moment I open my eyes, uh, first thing I say is thank you. So it's thank you, God, for being awake. Thank you for where I am. It's like uh, every part of me is in place. I am in a safe home. Thank you for my God, for my mom, for my family. I give thanks before I even get out of bed. So thank you is more than a common courtesy. It is so powerful. It's two simple words, right? It's two simple words to convey appreciation. And, and it lifts our spirits. And it gives more meaning to stuff. When we say thank you as courtesy, when someone does something good for us, we say thank you. But there is a lot of people that have a hard time saying thank you especially when someone is giving them a, a compliment. So receiving a compliment for some is difficult also. Let me give you an example just yesterday. This is why this entire thing came, um, came about is being grateful is to recognize the love of God in a way because it is so spiritual. I'm bringing all this together is being grateful. So we were together and someone passing by just said, gorgeous, and walked away. And she is literally gorgeous. And instead of saying, thank you, she looked at me and she said, why would he say that? It's like, instead of saying thank you, you're questioning it. Is it because it's a foreigner? Is it because it's someone else? But it's not only being gorgeous. It can be just anything. So when we accept a, a, a compliment and we say thank you, it's not so much for us, I think, but it is for the other person. You might ask me, what do you mean? But. When we say thank you, I think we also say thank you for 
appreciating something in me. In a way, by saying thank you, we are uh, accepting what they said. We are acknowledging what they say. And we are acknowledging and being grateful to what is it that they see. Because we have to have a plethora of that within us to be able to compliment someone. And complimenting, it's not as easy. And we can actually more people compliment and say, I love you to a purse, to a shoe, to a thing than complimenting another person. So my question to you is, do you easily compliment others? Do you also receive compliment as easily? And which one is easier for you to do? Um, I compliment all the time. And I like to say thank you to folks who, I, I like to surprise people. I send gifts to people. I send cards to people just out of the blue. And that in itself is an appreciation. There are so many people in my life that I thank out of the blue, I may call. And this is one of the things I would like you to start practicing, just saying thank you, uh, complimenting when you go to a restaurant and instead of just by a tip, when you compliment a server by asking their name. Usually servers, when they come and serve waiter, waitress, they don't give their name. I have a habit of asking their name. Why? Because everyone, most people, actually everyone, appreciates being acknowledged of who they are, not exactly what they do. I mean, everyone can come and serve you. But even when I see a name tag on them, I call them by their name. It's a validation of who they are. And by doing this, it's the person that got validated for serving me. And when I tip them, I say, thank you. And if their name is on the receipt, I circle it, put a heart or put a smile. And that in itself, after I sign, that, that is like acknowledging that person. So in a way, it's acknowledging every single being. We are all human beings, right? So we go goo goo ga go over our dogs and cats and everything, but not as much as humans. Another example is Saturday night, we went out and I have a standing great relationship with this or uh, this restaurant. So my friend and I went there and, you know, the place was packed. But as I went to check, I saw the manager, I'm like, hey, I give the kudos to the manager. I'm going, this place is amazing and it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at what you have done. It was literally packed, of course, social distancing and everything. And it's so good to see businesses thriving nowadays. And he says, what, do you have reservations? And I said, no, it's okay. We're here only for a drink, not dinner. Uh, we'll just come back says, no, I got you. So made arrangements for us to sit a place outdoors with a view, have a drink. And after, right before he's about to leave, he comes and says, hello, I buy him a drink. And you know, that's called socializing, being grateful. I thank you. You thank me for being a patriot. I thank you for being gracious. So thank you. When we say thank you to someone or a compliment, receive the compliment with full on graciousness. In a way, it's validating and saying thank you for seeing me. Thank you for recognizing what I did for you. It's just a simple see me, see you. So today I am grateful to 
to so many. You know how when we bring a good vibration and you get on that by uh, the cycle of goodness and lucky, what is being lucky? I think we create our own luck. And once we are on that, we bring more success. It's like the more money you have, the more money you make. The more successful you are, the more successful you become. The more, you know, and if we go into the opposite of constantly feeling I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I can't do this, life is not good with me, then we are in that cycle. Believe it or not, I was there a few months ago. It's like nothing is happening. Uh, there must be a, a retrograde happening in the universe. And if you believe it, then that's fine. And, but we can come up with all kinds of excuses until we make a choice. A choice of what is it that I want to establish and create in my life, right? So as I'm looking, I'm seeing, oh, kindness. It, yes, embody it. Hi, Sherry. You are definitely my sister from another ministry. <laughs> I don't know about a different minister, but definitely another mother. <laughs> uh, ministry, I think, when we preach love, kindness, gratefulness, thankfulness, then we also bring more bliss into our life. I am grateful for the new friendships I've created. In the last two months, there has been a plethora of goodness. So pick and choose of who you associate with. Pick and choose who you want to surround yourself with. And then when you see your tribe grow to become big, bigger, better, and they are there to hold your hand, believe it or not, we don't have to be the same sisters, but it becomes a sisterhood. We don't have to be the same blood, but you know what? It becomes a bigger tribe. And that's what I believe in. People like Forbes Riley, Manny Lopez, my family, certain friends that I have created that at six o'clock in the morning, love you, Dr. Kim. She calls me and says, I need you. I'm right there. When a friend of mine calls and says, Lisa, my sister needs you. She's going into a panic and anxiety. And we, I can't even bring her to you. You know what? I do not do house calls. But for certain people in my life that they have been there for me, I will do the drive. And I will be there. So... What does that say? Being friends, being grateful to certain people in our life, I think this is when you know someone is a friend. That when you call them, they don't ask, what is this for? What do you need me? What, where are, you? it doesn't matter. I think being grateful to certain friends, you can count them on one hand. Yeah, when you have a handful of people you can just text or call and they don't ask many questions, but where are you? What can I help you with? That's a blessing from God. That's a blessing that you have created and surrounded yourself with. I am grateful to this kid. I love to call Manny Lopez. I call him a kid because he is one of the most adult, sound-minded 
people I know that I have surrounded with and because of him, I have surrounded myself with other people. I am grateful to my mentors and coaches, my clients, my administrator, you know, and that is what we are. Handful is all you need, Jasmine Martin. Exactly, Jassy. And I love my family. And that's what I started with. A handful of the people that you can just call upon that would no question they are there. My brother from another mother, <laughs> Manny. <laughs> Hi, Vic. How are you? Um, you know, that is what we surround ourselves with. And that's called a gift. So when we are grateful from a compliment to at times of need, that means you have done something good. And appreciation starts with appreciating yourself. And as I said, in the last few months, I have surrounded myself vested in myself, invested in my business from one of the best bankers, uh, one of the best financial people, one of the best coaches. Um, and I'll give you names. And it's a shout out to them. And the same way as I do a shout out and thank a, what do you call it? a waiter, a server, the same thing goes with the people that are coaches, our mentors. Um, as I said, Forbes Riley, Karen Ellis. Um, I just got to meet Angel Tusi, uh, a friend that I made. It's uh, realizing, what is it that we said? Albert Corey. We connected and it's like, from Lebanon, we are blood relatives. Well, we are not bl blood relatives, but coming from the Middle East and everything that is happening there, another friend of mine, Shavik, who is one of the biggest heart people, I mean, she just gives and gives and gives, working with healthcare, working with uh, special need children, adults, you know, that is what we do. So here's why this entire thing came about. Because I want you to also think of the people in your life. Send them a note, if not a gift. A random phone call to your client, to the people in your life and just say thank you. Thank you for being in your life. Even if they haven't done anything. I am grateful to one of my teachers from high school, actually junior high school, Joe Willoughby. And I've said this for the, for the life of me, I have repeated that woman, this teacher, made a difference in my life. And if it was not because of her, I would not have the confidence. You know, she instilled in me a confidence that I didn't even know I had. And I'll say the story. I was in junior high school, art class, and I've said, I've mentioned this so many times, and it was lunchtime. We went to lunch and it was across the street. I was amongst some other kids and they were all smoking. I was smoking cigarettes. Yes, junior high school. This is awesome years ago, right? And um, and they, they were smoking marijuana. And I was the new kid in the block coming from Iran. And it was not even a year I was here, ninth grade, and I, they, I got bullied, literally, I got bullied all the time, and I caved in, and they said, have a hit, I did, 
And it was the funniest thing. We come back and it was my art class and she knew, she knew me as like the square kid or the good kid or whatever it was. And I adored her. So I'm laughing my head off, sitting there doing the art and everything. And she noticed that she, Jasmine, yes, good old junior high school, right? And uh, I started laughing, laughing my head off. And she called me and she said, Elizabeth, yes, my true name. She said, come here. She said, and said, did you do something different at lunchtime? I didn't know. And I said, no. She said, did you do smoke? She said, did you smoke something? And I said, no. Come on, tell me. It's okay. I won't tell anyone. And I said, uh, yeah. She said, who gave it to you? No, not, not narking. I knew that before anything. I'm not giving names. <laughs> That's one name I didn't appreciate and say thank you to my teacher. Anyhow. She kept me in that art class, called the next class, which was a history class, told him that she's keeping me in the class. And so I stayed in her class until the end. And when it was time to go home, I was already sobered. And before I left, she said, can you promise me something? And I said, okay. She said, Let's shake hands that you will never do that again because you're already a happy girl. You know, the promise that I made to that teacher served me to this day that I never had to touch that because I was already a happy girl and I didn't need to smoke anything I still kept smoking cigarettes. Let's not go there, but, but it was not touching drugs or anything because I was already a happy girl. It helped my self-esteem, boosted my self-esteem, validated who I was. And it was a promise that I never broke. And I'm saying this because the promises that we make, I think it is a validation. When it is a promise that makes you feel good, especially a promise that we make to someone we admire and we look up to. Teachers are the beginning of every child. So I am grateful to Joe Willoughby and I was grateful to my English teacher, Mr. Johnson, and my French teacher, Monsieur Hirsch. They made an impact in my life that to this day, the impact carries on. So every one of us has a mentor, and a coach, maybe a clinical hypnotherapist, your expert uh, person for sure. The room is cloudy. The famous bridge. Oh, I'm wondering what does the room is cloudy mean? Um, so we all have someone to be grateful from family, siblings, friends, mentors, and coaches. And for that today, let us begin our month of September by giving birth and gratefulness to the people who have made an impact in your life. And maybe I've made an, uh, made an impact. And if I have, by all means, please do share. I would love to hear from you, either as a client or as a friend, or as a mentor. It doesn't matter. Because the biggest referral in life, I think, is a testimonial. In life we go about 
remembering those who have been a part of our life and might as well be grateful to them while we can. So pick up a phone, send a text, send a beautiful card or a gift, no matter what you do. Or maybe you can pass or pay it forward. Here's one thing. We gather close and we give it to a thrift store. We give it to Salvation Army or we send it to somewhere else because we want to declutter our home, our closets. And you know what? The next time when you pass by and you see those bags, just send a blessing because someone used it. They were grateful while they used it. And the person who buys it, either at a thrift store or they go to a Salvation Army or anywhere else and they get it, you know, send it with a gratefulness, pack it up and say, it's a blessing that I used it. May the next person who uses it be as blessed. Because when we send it with a loving energy, it's like paying it forward. It's like tithing it. For those who know what tithing is in a church, in a synagogue, you know, we give a percentage away, but I think decluttering your closet on your home and when you give it, it's like, thank you, I got to use this and I no longer need it or want it. May the next person that uses it be with blessings. So that was today's message. Appreciate others call them by their names say thank you when someone compliments you and be more open to compliment others make them feel good as well at night before you go to sleep count your blessings for your body for your sound mind and your loving heart and in the morning be grateful for all the things before you get out of bed. And thank those who have made a difference in your life. Send a writer letter, you can burn the letter, send it off and think they will get it. Send it to the clouds. And one of the metaphors that I use with children, we usually do it and I say everything that has bothered you anything that you no longer want just imagine just imagine bubbles and bubbles of bubbles right and then you put all the things imagine everything that you don't want that has been bothering you that has been heavy that you no longer like it you put it in a bubble and you just blow it away or you can put it in a balloon and you tie it and we release it and it goes way, way into the sky. We all have a child within us. And with that, let me see. You were the best. I'm so happy I know you all. Oh, thank you. Hey, Mark, Edith, Jem Edith, thank you. Thank you for being a part of my life. I am grateful to you, Jem E for being where I am in this, in this cottage. You helped me be here. And, you know, this is what gratefulness is. It's not the things in your life, but the people in your life. So I am blessed to be in this cottage. I call it the cottage um, in Glendale. 
our healing center. I have bigger dreams because I also have a nonprofit that helps motherless children. If you want to know more about it, it's called HealWithinInternational.org. We are a nonprofit that helps motherless children. We've got bags. We give to motherless and fatherless, but our nonprofit is for motherless. And this is everything that I do. Every 10% of everything that I make was through my clients, through my books, through everything that I sell, it goes to my nonprofit. So in a way, I do my tithing, and I am grateful to the board of directors that serve on my organization and all the ones who contribute and pay forward. So I guess today is a day of gratefulness. To close today, I am grateful to you for being here, um, being present live here with me. And for those of you who are going to be watching this on a replay, please hashtag replay. And if there is anything that I can be of help to you, um, as your expert clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, I want you to remember one thing. To heal within, it only begins with one thought to help you transform from pain to gain. Let us evoke, embrace, and evolve to the best version of you. Why? Because you do matter. Thank you, and God bless you, and may the universal light surround you. See you next week. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.